let's talk about terms. What are some of the terms we're going to use for our house when we're figuring rafters? All right, if we measure, since our rafters are going to go across, up and over, up and over, the distance that they're covering is called the span. That's what you use in the rafter tables to figure out your rafter lengths, the span. Now, there's two spans. There's the nominal span, which goes from the outside of the wall to the outside of the wall. There is also a clear span. The clear span goes from the inside of the wall to the inside of the wall. Using the rafter tables, you're going to use the nominal span, not the clear span. Now, other terms you need to know is total run. Total run is half the distance of the nominal span. So if our nominal span is 30 feet, for example, our total run would be half of that, 15 feet. Our total rise is determined by the slope. So let's say that our slope is 6, and we want to determine what the total rise is. So all we have to do is take the total run times 6, and that will give us our total rise. So as an example, if we had a 30-foot span, our total run would be half of that, 15 take that times 6 our total rise then would be 90 inches okay because we're using slope it's in inches this rise would be in inches so when you do your calculations if you have to do any calculations you have to remember that the total rise then will be in inches and our total run was in feet. So to be able to do conversions or work with those two numbers, they would have to be converted to the same. So either you have to be inches and inches or feet and feet. So make sure that you're working with the same units when you're working with this. Okay? Now, I want to clear something up. Over here we have slope and pitch. For most people, when they talk about slope or pitch, they're talking about the same thing. But they're not the same thing. All right, what is slope? Slope is the unit rise over the unit run. And these are in inches. In most cases, for common rafters, the unit run is going to be 12. And in most cases, that's for the common rafter. For the hip rafter, it's going to be over 17. Then the unit rise will be in inches, whatever you choose the unit rise of your structure to be, or your roof. Okay. So unit rise over unit run in inches, 12 being the common unit run for common rafters and jack rafters and crippled jacks. So what is pitch? Well, pitch is a ratio. The ratio between the total rise to the span and these are going to be in feet so as an example ours is the nominal span is 30 and our unit our total rise is 90 inches so we can't use 90 inches because this is in inches and this is in feet, so we have to convert this to feet. So we take 90 divided by 12, 
that goes in there seven seven point five so the total rise is seven point five feet now since this is a ratio if the numbers can be reduced you could reduce them okay let's say that our total rise was six feet and our span was 30 feet well we wouldn't say that the the pitch was six over 30 we would reduce them we divide them both by six and we would get a ratio or a pitch of one to five okay so pitch is a ratio between the total rise and the span and since it's a ratio it can be reduced so the re this would be one to five whereas the unit rise is in inches and it's usually indicated by this little diamond here it'll have six and twelve on it so that is the slope and that is the unit rise so that's the difference between the slope and the pitch they are not interchangeable in most cases when people are talking about the pitch or the slope they're interchanging them they say oh it's a six well the six is the slope the six is not the pitch In this video, we are going to talk about how to use uh, rafter tables. What are the rafter tables? Um, when you bought your speed square, it came with a book. In this case, the Swanson speed square comes with this little blue book. And in it, it has rafter tables. What are the rafter tables used for? The rafter tables are used to determine the length of your hip rafters, common rafters, hip jacks when framing a roof. So I'm going to show you how to use the rafter tables to get rafter lengths. Okay, so at the top, if you flip open your book to the pages that have the width of the building. Alright, so for this example I've chosen 29 feet as the width of my building. Over here on the left hand side you'll see inch rise and one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. That is the inch rise. So that is your slope. Right here, com is for common rafter and of course hip is for your hip rafter. To read the table, all you have to know is what is your inch rise whether you're looking for the common or the hip rafter and what is the width of your building. So in this case I say my example is 29 feet is the width of my building. I've chosen 6 as my unit rise. So if I come down the common column and where it meets the 6, the 16 feet 2 and 5 eighths inches will be the length of my common rafter. Then I come down the hip column where it intersects with 6 and I get 21 feet 9 inches for the length of the hip rafter. So these would be the two lengths that I would use for my common and my hip rafter when constructing a hip roof. Okay, so what do you do if your span is not an even number? So up here, my example is 29 feet 6 inches. Alright, so the first thing to do to find the length of this 29 feet 6 inches 
is you go to the width of the building under 29 feet, go down the common, and you get 16 feet 2 and 5 eighths inches. Now, that takes care of the 29 feet. But what do you do about the 6 inches? Well, at the end of the rafter table, you're going to find a chart that says amount to add to common rafters for 1 to 11 inches. Okay, so in this case, we have 6 inches. So across the top, you're going to have the numbers 1 through 11. That's where we're going to go with the 6 inches. We're going to come over here to 6 inches in additional width. Then we're going to have to go to the 6 inches here, which was our slope. So we would come down the rise to 6 and across to 3 and a quarter, which is underneath the 6 inches. Now, what do we do with that number? We have to add that number to our 16 feet 2 and 5 eighths, which we got off our first chart. So add real quick 7 eighths, 5, 16. So our new rafter length for a span of 29 feet 6 inches would be 16 feet 5 and 7 eighths inches. Now, we're going to have to <clears throat> find the length of the hip rafter for our span of 29 feet 6 inches. So it works the same way. First we get the 29 feet, so we come in, down to our inches of rise 6 across to 21 feet 9 underneath the column for the hip rafters, 21 feet 9 inches. Then there's a separate chart, and in it, it'll say amount to add to hip valley rafters. So it's a separate chart from the one we just used with the common rafter. But it works the same way. We go across to 6 inches, which is our extra length. We come down to rise, which is our 6, and we come across instead of being three and a quarter inches on our common rafter now we have four and a half inches so using four and a half inches we add that to our 21 foot nine and we get 21 feet 13 and one half inches since we can't have 13, we're going to subtract out 12. That leaves us 1. We add that 1. We get 22 feet 1 and a half inches for our hip rafter. Now, the rafter we're going to figure out now is our jack rafters. Our jack rafters are these shorter rafters that will hit this hip rafter. All right. So there's a way to figure them using this rafter tables. So on a separate page, it will give you, it'll say difference in length of jack rafters for various spacings. So not only in this case we need our slope, but we need to know what our spacing is. And in most cases, rafters are spaced 24 inches on center. So I'm going to use 24 inches on center with my slope of 6. So using the book, I go to 24 inches down to 6, and I get 2 feet 2 and 7 eighths inches. Now, this is called the common difference. So your first rafter, this first rafter right here, 
will be 2 feet 2 and 7 eighths inches, not including a tail. If you want to put a tail on it, then you have to add to that length. Why is this the first one? Because when you lay out for hip rafters, you start from the corners and move to the center. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to move this way. And I'm going to start from here and I'm going to move this way. That way, the rafters will line up across from each other. So when this one puts pressure on this side of the rafter, this one on this side will even it out so your rafters stay straight. If you didn't, if you offset them, then after time you're going to get a rafter with it looks like an S. It'll look like a snake going up your roof. So you always want to make sure that these hip rafters are aligned across from each other. So the first one, 24 inches on center, will be 2 feet 2 and 7 eighths inches, plus the tail. Your second rafter, okay, you don't have to go measure. You've got this number right here. All I have to do then is I add 2 feet 2 and 7 eighths inches to the length of the first rafter to get the length of the second rafter. So that is uh, 14 eighths, 4, 4. So 4 feet, 5, and 3 quarter inches. If I did my math correctly. Okay, so your second rafter would be four feet four, or four, excuse me, four feet five and three quarter inches. Now, if you need to do other rafters, you can do the same thing. I'm going to add two feet two and seven eighths inches to each rafter until. I get to the length of the common rafter that runs into the ridge board. So I can do this two times, three times, I can do it ten times. It doesn't matter. All I have to do is add two feet two inches, two feet two and seven eighths inches to each of the rafters until I get to the length of the common rafter. It will not change. They go up at a this distance would be the same as this distance, which would be the same as this distance, okay? So it does not change. So, difference in length of jack rafters, you need the spacing and you need the slope. You use that common difference and just keep adding it to get the length of all of your jack rafters. We're going to look at how do we figure out the length of the ridge board. So when you're figuring out the length of the ridge board, you need to know what the length of the building is. So let's say we're just doing a regular ranch style house and the ranch style house is 50 feet long and then we also need to know what the width of the structure is. So let's say that the structure is 20 six feet wide. Alright? Now, to figure out what the length of the ridge board is, what we're going to do is we're going to take the length of the building and we're going to subtract the width of the building. Because we're starting here with our ridge, so we don't need this part right here. This part right here is equal to this part right here. So what this is if this is 13 feet, then this is 13 feet, and a hip roof is symmetrical, so then this side would be 13 feet from there to there. So we take the length of the building, subtract the width of the building. So right now we have a 
ridge board length of 24 feet. Now, is that finished? No, that is not finished. Because when you install your rafters, you subtract off three quarters of an inch from the common rafters because of an inch and a half wide ridge board. So we did the same thing over here. There's three quarters of an inch. So if we cut off our ridge at that point, it would be three quarters of an inch too short. So what we have to do is we have to add three quarters of an inch for each end. So we're going to add an inch and a half to our 24 feet and our ridge length then would be 24 feet 1 and 1 half inches. Okay? So you got to remember you have to add 3 quarters of an inch for each end. So let's say that this butted up to another part of the house. Then what would I do? Would I add three quarters and three quarters? No, I only have one, so I would only add three quarters of an inch for that one. Okay, so since I have the two, one, two, I'm going to add an inch and a half. My ridge length then would be 24 and one half inches.